everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. But we're not talking about them. Why them? What are we doing? Well, we said we had new content. Here's your first episode of yep. Team Breakdown. Team Breakdown is we're going to take every team during the offseason this year and break down what they could do to fix their problems or make their situation better. Depending on who you are, if you're in a good situation like the playoffs, how you can make it better to become contenders, like if you're out of the playoffs. So by that point, right now, we got to start at the bottom of the barrel. Pick number one. Yep. Pick number one being the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo Sabres, however, have had a decade long of misery. Trust me, I know. I've been a Sabres fan the whole time, and Jack Eichel has, eh, if he's healthy, lives up to the hype. If not, well, we'll get into that. No. Yep. But as you can see, growing up, my favorite player was Dominic Hoshik. And weirdly enough, probably the same for John. <laughs> same for me, yeah. Notable other mentions are Matthew Barnaby and Alex and Alexander Mogilny, just to name a few. Um, I also liked uh, quite a few other goaltenders and um, what? So, with all that being said, in Milwaukee we have Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre is one of the most iconic names and voices in all of baseball. Right. When it comes to doing radio, he's been doing it longer than almost anybody. Um, in that case, we have Rick Jernet. Rick Jernet is one of, he's been doing this for 50 years, as reported in April of 2020. So he has done this for 50 years. And he, he has said that next year may be his last. Yeah. Which is understandable. He's 78 years old. Will be 79 at the time. Um, let him live out the rest of his life. It will be different. It's much like us with Euchre where it'll just be different. Right. We won't know what to do. Um, but hopefully they can find somebody with his energy and, uh, you know, um, as me and John can attest to um, listening to game, watching games in, in, in our childhood, watching the Sabres and, and hearing him was just amazing. Yeah. He, he always brought energy and no matter how bad they were playing, he always brought that to the game. And whether right. it's his team or the opposing team and, and you know, I like that about him. Uh, it is a something lost in today's uh, broadcasting. Right. Uh, you know, uh, 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 also adding in my honorable mention, Marty Baran. Kind of forgot about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But let's get into their um, roster and stats real quick. All right. There was only four players in the plus area, and only one goalie had a 2.63 goals against average. One player had 40 points, and that's Sam Reinhart. That's it. Victor uh, Victor Golovson, as they call him. Very good play on words there. But um, they do have the talent. The problem for them is is getting them to work together. Um, one of the things right. that has been Buffalo's Achilles heel really badly has been defense. Yes, they've yeah. drafted in defense before, but as they put it, there's no such thing as too much defense because looking at the playoffs, as we said in our last video, defense wins you championships. Look at Montreal, look yeah. at both Colorado and uh, uh, Vegas, and look at Tampa, look at Boston, look at, you know, on. All the teams that made it had solid defenses except for Edmonton and Toronto. Yeah. You know, they had defensemen, more than two defensemen with pluses. Those all had teams with that uh, except for Edmonton and Toronto. They had two defensemen each with a plus, which is kind of sad. Right. Um, where, where Buffalo, the only 
plus they had was Stephen Fogarty. He played nine games. Jake McCabe, he played 13 games. And Brent Murray, two games. I mean, nothing to write home about. Obviously, the Taylor Hall thing didn't work out. Right. Back to the drawing board. All right. So now we get to their cap. Their cap, they have 1.2 million in access cap right now. Like literally at the end of the season, still have 1.2 million in access cap. All right. All right. So next year, they drop 5 million in dead cap. And are still paying Cody Hodgson until 2023 off of a buyout. Right. All right. So um, that being said, uh, their contracts up are Sam Reinhart. He is arbitration eligible. I, If I'm you, I'm trying to get out of that deal. Another thing that they did that is not really working that well for them is signing Jeff Skinner to a full no movement clause and signing him to a $9 million deal, which which turns out into 11% of their cap. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Skinner had seven goals, seven assists, 14 points, and a minus 11. Youch. Right. But then again, without Eichel, probably not helping him very much. All right. Uh, Kyle Poso, bad signing from the day one. I'd have bought him out, but he has a modified no movement clause. So you really can't buy him out. Right. He does have a 15 team no trade list. But he does have to present himself with another 15 teams that he can be traded to. The question is, who's going to take that $6 million hit? Right. Especially for somebody, Kyle Lacposo, who had 32 games, two goals, three, 11 assists, 13 points, and a minus one. Yeah. I mean, for him, a change of scenery might not be a bad thing. Uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, uh, I'll take two mil off the cap hits, Nashville. You could take Kyle. So <laughs> he might actually add us goal scoring. Who knows? Right. Sometimes change of scenery does it for everybody. The other part of this is um, Casey Middlestad and Rasmus Ospolin. Um, both of them are RFAs. Uh, you can tender both, tag both of them and move on with your day. You're probably gonna end up paying Middlestead two mil and Aspelin about a million dollars. So you're right. right. Um, Tobias Rieger, Drake Kagula, and Riley Shanahan are UFAs. I just let them walk. Yeah, I, I would. I would just let them walk. Um, in, in that sense, uh, Henry Yoki Haru, I would pay him. Rasmus Dalin, I would pay him. Uh, William. Uh, Borgen, uh, he has an arbitration. His stat line is 10 games minus four, no stats outside of the minus four. Yeah. yeah. I would not pay him very much. Right. Um, you got to pay Hutton or Linus Allmark. I'm letting Hutton walk and pay an Allmark. Just based off of Hutton's stats over the last four years, Hutton has averaged, give me a second while we get this here, um, as, and, and it's hard for me to say this as him being a former predator, so bear with me on that one, but in his time at Buffalo, he is, has a, in his first year, he had a 18, 25, and 5 record. He had yeah. a 12, 14, and 4 record and a 1, 10, and 1 record. And these are all averaging over three goals a game and in 
uh, St. Louis, Nashville, Rockford, not so much in Chicago, not so much in Toledo, walleye, but in Rockford, all averaged under 2.3, 2.4, around that. Right. 2.6 was as high, 2.7 maybe, you know, anywhere between 2.7 and 2.3 is about where he was averaging, which isn't horrid for that specific situation. Problem is, right, right. You, you know, he's a six foot goalie. He's 35 years old. Do you really need that cap hit against you? You're paying him right now 2.7 million. Where you're paying Linus Allmark 2.6. And Allmark had a better record and a better goals against average. Um, Allmark had a 20 games played, a 2.63 goals against average and a 0.917 save percentage. So still better than anything I've seen other, otherwise. Right. You know, to, to make it and all in all, I wouldn't be surprised if I, if he walked, because he is a UFA. I would not be surprised if he walked. But I also wouldn't be surprised if the Sabres didn't make him an offer he couldn't refuse. Right. Now, another thing is, and, and, and this is the big part, how long do you hold everything up in the air because now we're going to look at the general manager. Now the general manager was an assistant coach. Then he went into VP and then they put him as GM. So for my personal opinion, and this is just me, my personal opinion, I don't think maybe he should be a GM. But not 100% sure. Now, Terry Pagula does own the team, along with Kim Pagula. Um, with that being said, um, right now, as it sits, they do not have a head coach. Their assistant coach is Dan Girardi and Matt Ellis. Director of Player Scouting is Jer Jeremiah Crow. All, all 35 years of experience of life he has. His staff history is literally, they hired him June 26th of 2020. He's been doing this a year. Yeah. And he has no prior history to anything else. Um, Kevin Adams. Kevin Adams is their GM. His coaching experience was as an assistant coach from August 3rd of 2011 to May 9th of 2013. Now, right. during that time, he's coached for a year and nine months and six days. They actually give you the duration. Kind of cool. Then he turned to senior VP. Senior VP, eight months, 23 days, and then you get a promotion? to GM with no prior experience. All right, so let's talk about what he has done, okay? So what he has done, Taylor Hall, one year. That, all that turned them was a, hang on, I'm trying to get to their trade history here. Yeah, here we go. Traded here Taylor Hall and Curtis Lazar for Anders Bjork. Now Bjork's gonna be a good player in two, three years. Yeah. yeah. And a second round pick, which will be another solid player in another four or five years. Mm -hmm. It's just now you've traded away Brendan Montour for a third round pick, which looks like it's going to be 94th overall. Yeah. Um, you got 
picks from Montreal for Eric Stahl, who you don't know where they're going to be just yet. You also traded Jonas Johansson to the Colorado Avalanche for a sixth round pick. Yep. I think y'all could have got a fifth. At the time, they desperately needed a goaltender because of injury. Um, in that case, then, just going there with what we got here, he also signed Sam Reinhardt to one year deal, $5.2 million. Um, Brendan Montour, one year, 3.8. Yeah. And Olafson, two years, 3.05 mil. Linus Allmark, one year, 2.6. And his time, kind of, looking at it, Um, you got uh, Casey Middlestad, one year. All right. Um, we spark two-year entry-level deal, but has not reported yet. Dave Thompson, three year, one point four. You know, just looking at what he's done, and let's just look at what he's drafted. What he drafted in the first round was Jack Quinn. Then he drafted John Jason Paterka. And I said Paterka, not Paterka. Um This year, Paterka has put up 30 games, 9 goals, 11 assists, 20 points, plus 10 against men. Now, Paterka is 19. At this point, if were he in America, he'd still be playing in juniors. Right. Against kids his age. He's not playing against former NHLers and getting a lot of good experience. Also, in the juniors, in the international junior, he had eight games played, 12 points. Also, all uh, he also went to the world juniors, played uh, six games, had one goal, and then he played in the juniors, World Junior Cup, uh, 20s, and had five games 10 points. Yeah. Then he went to EC Salzburg, Salzburg, Salzburg. Um, played 12 games there, seven goals, nine assists, 16 points and up, plus four. I mean, the kids got talent. The question is, do yeah. it at this level? All right. So, looking at other things he drafted, not much there. Bear with me here, Sabres fans, because there's Bowen. Trust me, he's a little better than Bottero. Bottero was a joke. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying that on behalf of myself, not this Aye. podcast. I'm saying that on behalf of myself, not this podcast. He Aye. was a joke. He did not have a single clue how to GM an NHL team. Now, that can be said for a lot of GMs at times. Yeah. But to do it consistently is a problem. Absolutely. Wow. Um, and the other stats that I would like to bring up, as far as net mining goes, you got... The only thing you guys have signed next year, and, and this is where me and John kind of scratch our heads, is Yuko Pekka Lukalainen. Yes. Right. I actually got that one right. He was drafted <laughs> in the second round of the 2017 draft. Right. He signed his ELC at 19. Did not come over until about a year ago. Yeah. Posted a solid record, but just never had what he needed. It was just, right. you know, you keep sending him. You'd send him to Rochester. You'd send him to TPS. You'd send him to, you know, Cincinnati. You never gave him stability. 
And when right. you take away a player's stability, you take away his confidence. And when you do that, it can make it a little harder to coach him. Right. And you need to be able to coach this young player because when you drafted him, one game in the, in, against the Rock and in, in for the Rochester Americans in his first game posted a 2.00 goals against average and a save percentage of 0.941. He also played for the Sudbury Wolves, so he is accustomed to the American style game. Right. But now you play him in, in Liga and Rochester and you're sending him everywhere and it, it, it does wreck someone. It can wreck him. It can. And he's 22 now. If he's not backing up the starting goalie next year, the only other person you have left to do that is Dustin Tokarski. Yeah. 31 years old. And a career AHLer. Right. The most games he's ever played in the NHL was for the Montreal Canadiens, and he posted a 2.75 goals against average, and that was back in 2014. Since right. then, he's been in the AHL, bounced around from everyone from the San Diego Gulf to the Lehigh Valley Phantoms to the Hartford Wolfpack to the Charlotte Checkers to the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins and back to the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo Sabres, where he played 13 games and posted a 3.54 goals against the average and a .904 save percentage. Right. Ouch. I'd much take the young guy and let the young guy take his lumps than deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so they do have another problem. Another problem being Lawrence Pilot. Palou, Pilot. Lawrence Pilot. Lawrence Pilot's 25 years old, a 5'11 defenseman. Signed with the Buffalo Sabres. Played in 33 games his first year. One goal, five assists, minus eight. Second yeah. year, 13 games, no points, minus four. Four penalty minutes. He stays out of the dang box. He posted a lot of points in the, in the AHL, but it never just translated. Then he goes over to the Czech League this year, or the Russian League, the KHL. He was in the Russian League in the KHL. In that, he posted 57 games, 7 goals, 21 assists, and a plus 5 with 34 penalty minutes. Plus play, right. four playoff games, getting 2 points and a plus 3. When you do those things, why is he not signed? Right. That's just what I'm asking. All right. So your reserve list, you have a couple. Nobody that notably stands out outside of Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson was drafted in 2019. He is. Uh, Brian Johnson is a first round, 31st overall pick. Yeah. He is a. Left defenseman shoots left. Uh, that's common. All right, but let's talk about this. He is in the University of Minnesota. So, with that being said, he's got a lot of upside. Right. He's only in two years of college. The question becomes, if your defense is a problem, where in his case, plus 15, plus 5, minus 9, plus 24. Yeah. When do you take a stab at him? When do you go, we need you, and we're going to do whatever it takes to get you? Right.
All right. So now with this very young team, okay, they're yeah. relatively young. Their age average. Is their age average as a forward is 25.9. Their age average as a defense defense is 25.1. But Matt Irwin's 33 years old, adds into the two 21 year old defensemen. Yeah. As goaltending, you have a 28 uh, age average, but you got two goalies who are in the 30s. The rest are 22, 25, and 27. Right. Um, your forwards are Jack Eichel, who is a 20, who is going to be 25, and Jack McCabe, who is going to be 28. Zygmunt Jurgensen, who is on IR, he is 27. And right. Brandon Davidson, who is 29. As far as this goes, next year in total cap, they will have, let's see, 24, 10, and 1.5. So you're looking roughly, and I mean roughly, 15 million in cap space just as a market. Yeah. Yo, wait, here we go. Projected cap space, 32.646 million. Yeah. The next year goes up to 949 and then up to 62.5 all the way up till 2026-27. If you guys can't find a way to buy yourself some better players, I'm not saying buy a cup, okay? I'm saying there's going to be a big stick in free agency this year. Yes, there is. There's going to be a lot of them. With that being said, let's talk about some of them. Whether or not they would even fit this. Bill. All right. So, big monster on the board, Ovi, but he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> he he said he's not open to other teams, even though they'll probably come calling. Right. All right. One of the big ones, and I'm going to say this, not because I think it's a good idea, but because I think it would help a lot, is Tuka Rask. Tuka Rask his salary, he's going to get a cut there. It's going to be cut down. He's 34 years old. He's not right. going to make the $7 million he's making now. So you can pay him five, pay uh, Allmark, and have two of the best goaltenders and still have a ton of cap space. Right. Also, adding in, you got Taylor Hall, Brian Getzlav, David Krejci, Patrick Line is a RFA. As a person who would think that that would make perfect sense in free agency, if Columbus cannot resign him, you take a stab. The reason you take a stab is because at this point, what more do you have to lose? All right. That also depends on who you pick in the draft. I will get to that terribly. But you got guys like Derek Stepan, a veteran. You guys have no seasoned vets on your team to produce points. Right. Now, Stepan only played in 20 games and had an injury problem. Paul Statsny, injuries are not a problem with him. Points are not a problem with him. The problem with him is he wants more money than he's worth. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Nugent Hopkins would be a great piece to add to your team. Yeah. And this is where I think the perfect spot of it goes. 
if you can pull off pulling off a, something like him and maybe a defenseman like Esler Landis Cogs out there, even though that'll make John cringe. Hmm. You got James Schwartz out of St. Louis, good goal scorer. I mean, yep. there's plenty out there, and you have the cap room to go get him. You got Frederick Anderson, Pecorite, even though that makes me cringe. Um, you know, and, and, and with that, you got Ryan Murray, you've got so much to offer as far as free agents. You got Mike Hoffman, you could get Alex right. Martinez, Brandon Montour could come back at a low at a at a, more, a little bit more of a price. There's some stuff you could do to fix in the future. But speaking of the future, one of the things they're gonna have to do before the draft, before the season starts, before any of this will matter at all, right? Is head coach. Now, Tortorella. Let's talk about Tortorella. I think Tortorella is kind of passe at this point. Yeah. Tortorella's kind of has reached the playoffs 11 times in 16 seasons, won the cup twice, but let's be real here. Since since he's had those issues, may not be the greatest. Now, Let's get into this. Bruce Boudreaux, scratch that off the jump. Yeah. Why? Anaheim, Washington, Minnesota. What do they all have in common under him as a coach? One and done's in the playoffs. All right, now let's go here. Arizona had a really bad year this year. Yeah. And they fired Rick Tockett. I don't blame Rick Tockett. I blame the GM for putting a bad team in front of him. Right. Tockett was the assistant coach of Pittsburgh when the Sabres assistant coach or associate general manager, Jason Carmanos, worked for the Penguins. It might be worth a try. Gerald Gallant. This is a pipe dream. Reason I say that. Gallant's going to the Rangers. Or Seattle. It's going to come down to those two. Right. Here's where it gets a little interesting. Because with Carolina's exit, does Rod Brandemore get an extension with how poorly they played in the second round? Right. No adjustments made at any point during the series. They reverted back to the cheap tricks they had versus Nashville. And yes, I said cheap trick. Might want to go listen to one of their albums soon. <laughs> cheap trick. Common pun. Ha, ha, ha. But I'm saying this now. The, the real one that I personally would be interested. There's three of them. David Quinn is one of them. David Quinn posted a 96, 90, 87, and 25 record. All right. Going to the playoffs once. Now, Eichel has had him as a coach before. So there's some familiarity there that does help with going forward. Now, another thing. Now, I know... We've had our share over here in Buffalo of let's try and coach, get a coach from somewhere else and everything. Okay. Well, we have Ricard Gronberg. Gronberg just won the championship over there in the Swedish Hockey League. Yeah. He is, and he also coached St. Cloud State 
anybody that pays attention to college hockey knows that college knows it's highly it, it's up there with i believe wisconsin denver minnesota and umd and boston right so uh and north dakota one of the many reasons is he's coached rasmus Stalin. he also has an interesting part with swedes which right. made him with rasmus Ristolainen and olsen we also got Uh, Nate Lehman, head coach of Providence College. Nah, I'm a big fan of that idea. Yeah. Uh, Andre Turnijai, who is the head coach of the Ottawa 67s. Now, here's where that gets interesting because the Ottawa 67s were co uh, had two prospects in the last year named Dylan Cousins and Jack Quinn. Where did they play? Or where were they drafted? I don't remember. Buffalo. I thought. Buffalo. They are part of Buffalo's team. He has. All right. Then we got Pascal Vincent, who is always up for an NHL coaching gig. Right. He's coached young players like Kyle Connor, Jack Roslevic, Mason Appleton, Brandon Tenev, Jansen Hoskin, Logan Staley. He spent the last five years as an assistant coach under Paul Marais. He's coached Manitoba, and he is a pain to play against. The other one is Troy Mann of the Belleville Senators. Makes sense, 51 years, developing and creating a ability at each one of his places he has played. Right. He has coached. He has coached Belleville. They were right neck and neck with us the last time we played. He coached Hershey to a championship. Yep. Now we get into the current assistant coaches. Hey, we're talking about an Admiral's alum. Blaine Lambert. Yep. Blaine Lambert worked with the, the forwards of, the Buffalo, uh, of Washington. He has coached the Islanders. He was the head coach of the Milwaukee Admirals and had a hand in developing Patrick Hardquist and Roman Yossi. All right. If that don't speak for you, I don't know what will. Then we got Mike Pelugi, Penguin, assistant coach. Coach of the year in AHL and OHL. Led the Checkers to the Calder Cup. And making top forwards become NHL ready is such as Martin Ekast, Morgan Geeky, War Warren Fogel, yep. Steve Ott, 38 years old, former Buffalo Sabres captain. Yeah. He's an assistant coach, not far removed from play career. He was an assistant coach when they won the cup. Then we get to Rocky Thompson. Rocky Thompson, 43 years old, led the Wolves to the Calder Cup in 2019. They did not win it, but he led them there. All right. Um, also, he has worked, has had heavy success in the AHL and OHL. Woo! Uh, what else we got here? We got Todd uh, Redner. He was the assistant coach, fired in back-to-back -back shortcomings in the Stanley Cup playoffs. He led the Washington Capitals in a 89-46 and 16 among two right. seasons. Under, oh, he was 49 years old as an assistant coach to Barry Trotz in 2018.
Uh, he's worked hard with, with the Penguins' defense, but his offense needs work. Yeah. Uh, who knows what way they could go, but there is definitely an overabundance of coaches. Yes. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if they went to ours. Uh, the Milwaukee Admirals head coach Carl Taylor has done wonderful things here and wonderful things with Chicago over the season. All right. All right. So upcoming now, we're on our last part, which is the draft. All right, we're going with this because um you know, it's it's really uh It's really getting to a point where you got to kind of watch what you're doing and how you do it. Right. So, we're going to go with the top 32 prospects and kind of see where we can fix what we need to fix. All right. So, if I'm Buffalo, I know I got two top centers in Middlestead and Reinhardt and, and Eichel. So you got three guys who can play center. So right. You might stay away from that position. But Matthew Brainer may be a, one of those exceptions where, yeah, too much of a good thing ain't a bad thing. Right. The other part is, do you want Jasper Wolfstad? Wolfstad is tw- is posted 22 games and a 2.23 goals against average and a .908 save percentage. That is just nuts. Yeah. At that age, that's just nuts. And, and I'm not talking about this. He's doing it against men at the age of 17. Right. He just turned 18. Well, he's been 18 all year. Okay. He just missed the draft by a week. Wow. Last year. He's six foot three, 214 pounds. Um, he is signed through the year with... Um, with a uh, uh, Louia hockey 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 club, I believe that is. Um, the other thing is, when you draft a guy like Matthew Brainer, are you going to get him to come out of college right away? Right. Owen Power, same thing. Are you going to get him to come out of college right away? The other thing is, you could get a guy like Brent Clark. Brent Clark went and played in Slovakia this year. He's out of Canada. Yeah. Um, he went and played against men, 26 games, five goals, 10 assists, and a – please tell me that's – oh, that's penalty minutes. Ah, I thought that was a plus minus. I was going to say plus minus of 41. Holy smoke. <laughs> yeah. No, but you look at it and, and you have plenty of options. I mean – this draft is probably one of the heaviest I've seen in a while. Yeah, me too. I mean, I've been looking at it for the last month. I mean, you got Carson Lambos, who is Canadian, and he went overseas, played 13 games, and had 11 points, and he's a defenseman. Right. I mean, you're running at full bore here where, you know, you could run at full bore and have so much to offer. I mean, you're right. talking even at all right, even at rank all right, I'm already down to rank 30 and I'm seeing guys plus 40 points still. All right. You got guys that, you know, it's it's just really weird to see. Right. 
this much. Now, I'm going to also give you, that was Elite Prospects top 32. I'm going to give you Sportsnet. Sportsnet has them picking Owen Power. Reason being, Owen Power has one thing. I hopefully it's power. That would be funny. Owen Power is a six foot five defenseman. Yep, he's got power with a two hundred and fourteen pounds frame. And right. definitely got weight to that in the NHL. Let's just talk about this. In his first year in college as a defenseman, twenty six Three goals, six assists, sixteen points, and a plus eighteen. That is something that the Sabers desperately need. But with that, I mean, if there's anything else you would like to add, John, um, I mean, I've kind of touched on a lot of topics here, but you have. There's anything you want to add? There's a lot of things that are going to happen, not just with Buffalo, but all over the league. Like you said, between the draft, the free agents, um, and expansion draft, um, it's just going to be insane. Plus, then you have the leftover stuff from the pandemic going on. Which players are going to come back? Which players don't want to? Which players might retire to spend time with their families? We don't know all that. You know, there's, there's going to be a lot of movement. And I think it'll be a good thing for the game. It, it generally is when there's a lot of movement, but um, it's also risky in next year. It's also risky. Yeah. When there's a lot of movement, it's a risk. And hopefully you can get capitalized on somebody else taking a chance. Right. Now with the cap at a deadlock, you may see teams buying guys out at a astronomical rate. Right. Because they're saying the cap may be locked for four years. If that's the case, you're going to see guys getting bought out at an astronomical rate, and they're not going to get paid the amount. They're not going to want the amount of money that they're getting paid now because they're still making that. So they're not, right. They're going to go. Well, I'll take a pay cut to play with you if you can put this and this here with me so that I can work with that. Right. It's just it's just one of those things where the Sabers have enough cap room to make it flexible for themselves. Yeah. What what happens, who knows? I will say this. If they have another rough year, I'm thinking that GM's gonna be out the door. Yeah. And it, it's just not gonna be any better. Um but anyway, uh with all that, we gotta get ready. We have about 15 minutes before we have to start watching the Florida Everblades. So See y'all later, and hope you love uh, loved our breakdown of the Buffalo Sabres.